Hello, my name is Richard Murray. This is the Zadim channel, and this is part one of how to add some horses to the train layout through 3D printing. Part one is Daz 3D. Let's get started. So what is Daz 3D? Daz 3D is a 3D modeling program. It's been around since 2000. It wasn't designed for 3D printing. It was for people who wanted to make 3D models, whether it's for their own use or if they're creating things uh, for a game uh, to learn how to do 3D modeling. Now, it is a free software and you can go to daz3d.com and you can download the package where they make their money. Uh, first of all, you can get add-ons to add some more advanced features, but primarily it's through their marketplace for buying models. So if we take a look at the Daz screen, when you open it up, here's uh, your home page you open up with Daz, Daz Home Studio. Now I'm not going to make this as a tutorial for getting through how to learn the program. I just want to show it. Daz 3D has a very large community and having a large community there's a lot of tutorials out there and a lot of how-to videos. So it's an easy package to learn as there are a lot of resources out there. Let's take a look at the marketplace and I'm just going to drag that window over here and there we go you can see that there are models after models on here a lot of very interesting things a lot of people uh, it's a very wide marketplace one thing to note and I'll be going over this again and again much of what you see on here is texture mapping over a basic model Texture maps at this point in time have very little uh, use when you're using the models for 3D printing. There's a little bit of use, but not a lot. So within uh, the marketplace, I was looking for horses. And there are a wide variety of horses available on here. I chose the Daz Horse 2 when I bought this. It was $39.95 US. So I purchased this horse. You can see it looks very nice with the color. Once again, that color doesn't mean anything for us for 3D printing. Also, it's important to note, here's another shot. Uh, uh, the mane and the tail are texture maps. These hairs are not modeled. A surface is there so they can project a picture of a tail and a picture of a mane on there. But they are not themselves, not the hairs. And this is very important for 3D printing. The other very important thing you have to remember when downloading any object is what rights you have for using that object. And within DAS, there is a user license. How can you use this model? And here's the important part to go to within the end user license, and that is what you can do for 3D printing. Most other licenses coming from DAS products adhere to this particular print license and you can do up to 20 commercial prints under this as long as you have the commercial license for it. So once again, I want to stress, take a look at what rights you have for the model. We have to be fair to the artists who have done all the work uh, to create these models or to the companies that have uh, paid to get the work done. So double check the license before you start printing. So here's the horse that we purchased. It's a great model, nice detail to it. But one thing it's important to look at, as long as I go the right way, here's that tail I talked about. Looks nothing like the picture. We have to add the modeling to it. And that is part of the process we'll be going through with this series. So first of all, I don't want a horse standing like this. 
I don't want the tail pointing straight out. What do we do? We have poses that we uh, can use. And Daz provides us with a range of poses already, and we can further modify them as needed. Here's the horse. We have a wide range of poses. Right now I have one. It's called Walking One. Is that it? No, we are Standing Two. Things where we're in motion do not work for a model that's going to be a static model on our layout. The horses, all the animals, the people, even machinery, uh, you don't want to catch them mid-motion. You want them at the start of the motion or at the end. The best thing to do is, in this case, for example, the horse is standing there looking around. Now, one of the reasons we want to use rig models is so we can have a wide variety. Once again, I mentioned I model pre-1910, focusing closer to 1900. There are horses all over the place. It's the primary means of transportation, whether you're riding, you're in a wagon, or you're hauling stuff in a wagon. You're bringing stuff to the trains. We have our trains there, but to get things to the trains, you're gonna be using horses. So I need a lot of horses. If I were to go and get a commercial model and get it, I'm only gonna have so many poses and it's gonna get repetitive around the layout. So by doing this, we can start changing things. So here the horse is looking down, but if I want to tweak it some, I got the body and we can go into an editor and we can start dealing with components of our horse. Is it pregnant? We can change sizes. Now if it's pregnant and it looks like they may do this, Yep, I took care of it. We now have a mare. So I have a slightly pregnant mare. They've taken care of that issue for us. At, uh, what else do we have? We have other bones around here, do we? Pose controls. Uh, the neck. What we're we going to do side to side, we can have it looking over to the side. How does that look to us? My problem is, is this horse that I printed is already looking off to one side. It's going to be looking the same way, so I want uh, this to actually not be there, but I can raise the neck some. And I can arc the neck. Hey, how's that looking? So now I have a horse that's actually, the ears are forward. If you've worked around horses, you know, you want to follow the ears and they communicate a lot to you what the horse is paying attention to. This horse is looking up, it's going to be following the train as it goes by. So I now have a unique horse for my print. Only problem is there's no mane and no tail. So we have right and left manes. We've included, uh, I've added this. And you can see it doesn't look like hair because it's not. All it is is a surface to project the texture map on. We can't use the texture map within our 3D prints, but we can use these surfaces after I export it from DAS. So I have the surface to work from. I can do some modeling in here. There's just other software that's easier to use it for. Uh, to, and I can actually go and modify parts of this and the one thing I do want to modify is the forelock because to me that's way too long. So what I want to do is go and do some editing of this and it's the right main. We're going to scroll down. What else do we have? Forelock, forelock longer or shorter and there I've made it shorter. I'd actually like to have it uh, a little bit shorter than that. So I can even modify it further. There. So that's about the length I want. Now I'll detail this within another software package later on. So we now have the main, let's give the horse a tail. So I'll select the horse's tail over here. We have that and now I will add a tail. We now have a tail, but it's quite long. We have extra controls over this. We can 
uh, size the tail up very nicely. So what do we have here? Let's go to the tail, see what controls we have over that. Uh, this is under the chafing commands. Once again, we have the tail. Uh, we can roughen up the edges here. I'm going to spread it out. We do have controls, but you can see we're not dealing with hairs with this. So a lot of this does not matter. The big thing to me is the tail length. And I am once again telling it to ignore the parameters that they've set. And I'll hit the right button. I'm going to make it a little bit shorter because it's going to straighten out down the road. So what we have here is a horse. It has surface for the mane and it has a tail and we posed it in a unique way and we made it slightly pregnant. So ready to go, ready to go. we have our model. What are we going to do next? We're going to export the model. My naming convention is I use the date and this is the second one that I've done today. Actually that too should not be after the date. It should be before the date. I can get there. I know how to do this. So we asked it to save. Now there's another options and this is the area I had to do a lot of playing around with in order to understand how to expect more export models for 3D printing. But right now we used export uh, and I'm going to is this is one of the key components ignore invisible nodes with a traditional export in order to save data space if you're doing an animation or something if you don't need to see it they don't bother putting it there so it disappears from the model we need it for our 3d print so hidden things have to show up same as going as remove unused vertices once again are unused they're not used for the animation we can't see them but we need them for a 3d print Change those two. We don't need groups for it. We do not need the various color maps that are going on here. It doesn't impact our 3D print. So uh, write the normals. That's another important component of what we need. We accept this and it renders it out. And we now have a 3D model that we'll be able to work with. Coming up next, We'll take that model we just exported and we'll be massaging it through a number of packages in order to get it ready for our 3D print. So that's what's coming up. In the meantime, I hope you liked the video. If so, hit the like button. If you didn't, hit the thumbs down button and please leave me a comment on uh, what you didn't like. I will put the information down below uh, for DAS 3D so you can go look at the software yourself. And if you haven't already done so, please subscribe, hit the bell so you can see when I posted a new video. I try to get a blog out every Sunday and Wednesday mornings at 10 a.m. Pacific time. I try to go live for a while with whatever I'm working on. Be safe out there and I'll see you next time.